Welcome to Capillaris Ultimate Talk TV. Be inspired, informed, and elevate your mind one step at a time. Talking about life, real estate, business, and beyond. Your host, author, speaker, real estate broker, Carmela Zita Capillaris. Hi, and welcome to Capillaris Talk TV. We have an, an amazing show for you today, packed with information. My first guests are here to talk about how to make your moving day stress-free. I'd like to introduce Norton and Linda Lamberski from Door to Door Movers. Thank you Hi. for having us. Thanks for coming. A pleasure. <clears throat> how do you find a reputable moving company that you can trust? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, the main one is, is, is what you want to do is uh, speak to people that you know, you trust, that you like, and listen to their opinions. Um, and that, to me, would be your realtor, especially when you're moving, obviously. Um, the realtor has nothing really to gain other than they want you to have the best of what they offer or what they suggest. And listening to your realtor is one viable option. Um, another option, <laughs> okay, is that uh, you can check on um, uh, a list of, from uh, the Canadian Association of Movers, of uh, movers in your area. Um, it's always advisable uh, to, um, to check uh, websites. Website. Check, it's very important. Mm -hmm. You want a legitimate moving company should have a legitimate website. Mm -hmm. your inf almost everything that you need to know to make your moving day go a lot easier will be on that website. We have tips, we have information, we, have con we even have people you can call um, we have attorneys listed. Everything is there, and right. that's very important. Also, that's where you're going to have your rec your referrals. You're going to have comments posted, negative, and po and mm -hmm. that's the thing. There's got to be some negative because there is no such thing as a hundred percent successful business in anything. Right. So yes. it has to be if it it has to come across as being sincere and honest. Yes. That's and that's right. the most important thing. And a lot of times, people are not stupid. They will look at something and they will self-analyze and they will say, hmm, kind of sounds too good to be true. Mm -hmm. Usually it is. Yeah, so make sure that the company uh, has a legal name and address and there's actually a place uh, registered. Uh, don't uh, get the one that just has a cell phone because that... Kijiji. Yes, that's oh. right. So look, uh, those are red flags, right? Oh, and we'll talk, absolutely. We'll talk more about some other red flags um, and a lot of moving scams that are going on too right now. But first, how is a cost, how is the moving cost usually estimated? Okay, we have what are called industry standards and they're based on overall averages. Mm -hmm. Okay, generally the way it works is you should assume that a one bedroom a, an average one bedroom yes. will run you three to five hours start to finish. Okay. A two bedroom would be four to six hours. Right. A three bedroom now you're going into the six, seven, eight, depending on square footage. We have been doing this for 16 years. We can give you a pretty good idea. Right. But as far as an exact estimation, you, you have to be okay. careful there. So a cost is usually uh, estimated by um, Hourly. size time, mileage, all and these things yes. come and into play, right? Yeah, all these things come into play, mm -hmm. but uh, the square footage of the house? Yes. Um, Basement, garage. Right, okay, so um, it, it's a lot of variables. Exactly. And um, do you give people over the phone estimates, or is it better for them to get an in-person estimate? And do you guarantee your estimate? We guarantee our estimates, okay, um, in the sense um, that we, we try to, <clears throat> okay, first of all, to your question about phone estimates, um, it, it, it's just like what Linda said, we'll give the averages, okay, but what it boils down to, the more organized you are, the quicker it is. Um, when I go into a house and, um, and when I'm talking to the, uh, to the owners, um, I'll give them a, a rough guesstimate of how long mm -hmm. their move is going to be, usually like within the one to three hours, again, depending on variables, which could include distance, time, right. um, health of the, uh, health or, or health of the clients, too, is yeah. the matter, because some people cannot be totally ready. Right. And 
and then you have to factor in these variables when you're giving the estimates. But should it be, uh, is it okay to get one over the phone or should it be an in-person, in-the-house estimate okay. and should it be in writing? Okay, Let, let's, let's clarify something. Even if you get a written estimate from a moving company, mm -hmm. you really have to look at that fine print right. because those estimates are usually not even worth the paper that they're written yeah. on. Is that right? Yeah. And then there's always going to be hidden costs. that they, So they will try to give you a written estimate to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. It will be underestimated. And then, lo and behold, come moving day and it's too late for you to find someone else, mm -hmm. they know they have you. And come hidden fees. Some companies are charging per step. So they're, they're coming up with the most ridiculous extra charges for customers. And people are sucked in. Mm -hmm. It is not the that that so written how estimate is not. So how should people go about getting an estimate? What, well, how, what should people do when they call a mover? Okay, the thing is, we give an hourly rate, and the reason we do that is actually to benefit the customer, because there are two ways these written estimates can go. The first way is which I just stated, where they will underestimate to get your move. Right. The opposite would be the companies that come in and tell you, oh yeah. This is going to be $3,000. Right. They are overestimating in order to, to, com to cover mm -hmm. in case they don't know what the receiving end is going to be like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're, you so could what should be, one do? Well, again, check to make sure it's a reputable company. You call, That's in, the you most call in two or three thing. moving companies. Absolutely. Okay? Right. And then you don't decide right away. That's mm -hmm. the key. It, you, know, you, you, um, you sit back and analyze everything that's been said, that's been written. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have to take it uh, you know, one step at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I'm saying, like referrals um, are, are a big factor in moving. If you've been referred by your real estate um, um, agent or a relative or, or a friend or someone that has been recently moved, okay, you got a better chance, a better shot of having a, 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 a better move than just taking someone off the street. Okay, so you're not going to give anybody an estimate in writing? Is that well, what you're I, saying? I give an estimate oh, in, in a do. sense and in, in how long it'll take, but it, it depends on variables. You just go by hour, more or less. Basically. It's a lot cheaper at the end of the day for the customer who's going on an hourly rate. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Also, mm -hmm. the, the thing is, some customers will, will be so ready by the time that truck pulls in yes. that their move is ended is done within five or six hours when they've actually been thought it was going to go on for eight to ten hours. Right, right. They've even taken their beds apart. They've taken the mirrors off dressers. Mm -hmm. they, this is how you cut your move time down yes. and this is how you make it as absolutely cost efficient for yourself as you can. Linda, what about deposits? Should people give a deposit up front? No. No. Okay. No. Should they ask for a, a balance due on closing? The, the the account is always due on closing. Okay. When that last piece but of furniture... But no deposit up front? No. 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 Okay. No. That's There's no mistake. reason for that. There no is no, reason no. for that. Don't ever do that. Just Don't sign up the company no. and then take it from there. We will give you... First of all, if Norton comes in to see you, Norton will give you a copy of the invoice mm -hmm. with all the information that he has discussed with you. Yes. If you're speaking to us by phone, we will send you an email. You will always have something from us telling you that yes, you are booked for this and this date, right. at this and this rate, and so on and so okay. forth. How many men are coming to so confirm it? People should always get more than one quote, correct? Yes. Always get more than one quote. What are some safe questions? Uh, what are some questions to ask so they'll be safe when it comes to moving to uh, for a, to a mover? Um, that's an open question. It, it, are it, they insured? Might be a question. That's one. Um, references. References. Yes, yeah, for mm -hmm. references. Um, you ask for references. The, uh, the what you want to do, okay, when 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 you're picking a mover is yes, ask the, ask the right questions. You so want to know if they're covered by uh, WSIB, WSIB, right? That's very yeah, important. Yeah. Okay, because a lot of movers. What is say, WSIB for the people that don't know? Uh, WSIB is the Workman's Safety Insurance Board. If someone um, gets injured in your home, okay, yeah. um, the WSIB takes over. Right. Um, from my understanding, they legally can't sue the person unless the injury was because of negligence by the uh, by the client by, mm -hmm. by the homeowner. Mm -hmm. um, if you have um, uh, movers in your house that aren't covered by WSIB. Yeah. The, the, the worker can actually sue you, and from what I understand, the WSIB can also sue the homeowner. Right. Okay, so... And uh, Norton, 
always be aware of cash transactions only, right? You don't want to do a cash only transaction, correct? If a moving company tells you to pay by cash, yes. that should be a huge red flag. That's a red Definitely. flag. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now you can't take you we can't unfortunately do debit because it's a, a truck situation yeah. and those machines tend to break. Okay. But you should Definitely Visa, MasterCard. The American only, Express. Yeah. Right. The only thing and we don't accept is, is checks anymore. They're sort of obsolete now. And mm -hmm. and maybe another thing to do is to take like an inventory of uh, your possessions. That would be a good idea too. Well, with us, okay. Um, for the for the uh, for the client, yes, I, I would actually videotape yeah. what you have. Yeah. Okay. So if there's any discussions afterwards, you can show it. Yes. Um, but again, there, there's um, there's people that play games, okay, Let's and that's the thing the that you have to be careful about. Let's talk about, about the yeah. moving games and the moving scams. Yeah. Uh, there is one where they actually take your furniture and your possessions and they hold them hostage. Okay, that's it's, tell us about that okay. one and what they, people that, can do if that I, ever I, happens. I love that you brought that up. Uh -huh. It is so illegal. It's not it's even illegal. funny. Yeah. I know. You should be phoning the police. Call the police right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, some of our guys have actually been deputized. Norton has been deputized. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're, yeah, no, it's true, though. Um, definitely. Listen, that's theft. So that would mean, like, people, the mover shows up late. He uh, puts all of your furniture and belongings into the truck. Right. And then instead of going to the new location, they say we can't move unless you sign this visa and it could be a blank visa and they ask you for more money another thousand dollars so we will keep your your possessions in this truck unless you do this this and that which is illegal but there are moving companies that do it it's called extortion yes right. they do That's that a scam. They also, so the, beware the, of they'll that they'll also even go further in the sense that we, we had a, a not us but the, i was called to give a hand uh, to a client, uh, actually was a relative of a client. Um, what happened was uh, the truck came, they filled the, the truck up, it was a 20 foot cube van or something like that. Um, they, they were going to the uh, drop off and along the way they stopped at a gas station. They said either you pay us uh, the money now or and it was a lot more than it was supposed to be or they were gonna start throwing everything into, on the, um, at the gas station on the ground. Right. Okay. Um, I, I turned to the gentleman on the phone. I said, "Get a hold of the police. Mm -hmm. Have them come." And it, it's kind of like a civil matter because some papers were signed. Uh, I said, "In that case, you know, just go back to the drop off yes. and have it all dropped off there. Just make sure that the police are there." Okay. We so call the police if anything like that yes. uh, happens and complain about it, and you'll know right away. Um, just a few more th where a few more questions before. We, uh, we have to close it up, but what happens if people don't get their keys uh, on time? What happens if people get their keys late? Okay, Can you delay start, sorry. and is, there, is that an extra charge? That's a key wait. Um, it, it, when you get an estimate, okay, and it's, uh, they're saying your home move is not going to be more than $2,000 or something like that, there's always a waiver in there or a condition in the sense that uh, if they have to wait for that key, yeah, there's an hourly charge. Um, with door-to-door -door movers, it's the same process. Um, if we have to wait for a key, um, we have to charge the, the customer. They're on the clock. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but what we try to do to offset that is try to have delayed start time, so they're not paying nearly as much as the, uh, uh, mm -hmm. having to pay, you know, from eight o'clock in the morning, where we'll start eleven, twelve, one o'clock, sort of thing. Also, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of it does depend on whether you're moving in the summer, right, yeah. or in the winter, right. If Do you're you moving on June the thirtieth. Mm -hmm. when everybody else is closing their house yeah. you're going to be paying two times more for your move right and it's going to end up costing a lot more and we will not start your move at 12 or 1 o'clock simply because sometimes we have two moves per truck it's that I busy see. i see where can people get supplies for moving i always tell people to um check uh, your uh, the internet go to a moving supply store uh, the moving supply store has all your needs that you that you that you need for moving. Um, some people go to U-Haul or wherever to get boxes, but mm -hmm. they're not moving boxes. Uh, moving boxes are a little bit thicker, stronger, and it protects your furnishings better. Do you provide storage uh, for people that uh, they need storage? Oh, that's another nightmare. No, um, <laughs> honestly, um, a lot of moving companies will store your furniture in old trucks, mm -hmm. like Dick dilapidated trucks that can leak and can your belongings if they're left on a truck right. are not insured there's no yeah. insurance company that is going to cover your belongings 
-hmm. while it is left on a truck unsecured. Right. The best way to go is always, if you must use it, use one of these public storage places where you can get in and out of to get your own stuff if you need. And you have the key and nobody else can get exactly. into it. Exactly, and no one can touch your belongings. That is so great. Thank you so much for all those tips on moving. Thank you. Uh, if people want to reach you or get some more tips, uh, what's your website and your contact information? Okay, we are at doortodoormovers.ca. Yep. And you can reach, well, our, our uh, line is 905-721-2828. We Great. also have a toll-free number. Which is 1-800-497. No, it's 1-877. Sorry, 1-877-497-2828. <laughs> okay, we'll put the credit I'm not too screen. nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for pleasure. being here. Our pleasure. And thanks for all the information. I think you've helped people a lot. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.